All right, let's take a look at the coding functionalities in R. I hope that you're excited about it because the whole coding part is gonna be great fun and I hope you're gonna like it a lot. So first of all, since R is basically a statistical program or since its first purpose was to facilitate statistical analysis, you could of course also use it as a giant calculator like we did over here. So let's take a look at this simple example, just 4 plus 4 plus 5, this should add up to 13. And as you can see in the console where the actual calculation takes place, we get the output of 13. So this is basically the output, it is marked by the number 1. And in this part you can see the line which we sent from the script section to the console. Please note that it does not matter how much space you would use for your coding lines, you would eventually get the same result. Let's take a brief look at the operator. So you of course have the plus, the minus sign, the multiplication sign and the dividing sign. So it's those four signs which are the basic operators. Let's run a calculation and as you can see in this line we were using all four basic operators and we got this output. In many scripts you will see that objects are created. So this is a major part in data scientific programming. Therefore we have several ways of how we can create objects and we have several ways in how we can do assignments. So the first one would be we can use this kind of arrow sign which consists of the smaller sign and the minus sign. The arrow always points towards the name of the object. So in this case I call the object x and the arrow points to this side. In this case I'm calling the object y and the arrow points towards the y letter. When you have a collection of numbers or values, you would have to use the concatenate function to somehow bind all those values. So concatenate or C is a really, really important symbol and you should keep that in mind. So let's run this line to exemplify what happens if you do that. All right, so now you see that you did not really get an output. You only see in the console that this script line was actually executed. There is an important thing that happened to the whole RStudio program now. Over here in the global environment you can see that there is a new object or this value x. And there is also some sort of information what is inside this object. In this case we see that it is a numerical object with three values. And then we also see those values over here, which are 4, 5 and 6. So this was basically the first object we created in R. And as you can see in this line down here, we have the same setup, but now the name of the object is at the right side and the arrow points towards this symbol again, towards the Y. So again, we have another object, the object Y. If we want to send this whole object now to the console and we want to see some more in-depth information about this object, we can just type in the object name, which in this case is Y, and we could run this line. And as you can see, now we have the output also in the console. Another way in how you can create object and how you can do assignments is simply by using the equal sign. So in this case x equals concatenate and have the numbers 4, 5 and 6 as my example numbers. And this would basically do the same thing as we did in this line over here. We again created the object x. Another way in how you can create objects and how you can do assignments is by using the assign function. By using this function you would then in brackets, normal or round brackets, you would state the name of the object under quotation signs and after a comma you can again use the concatenate function and insert the values which should be inserted in that vector. And if I'm running this one you now see that the object x has changed to these numbers up here which we specified within this concatenate function. So those are the ways in how you can create objects and how you can do assignments 
and you will see those things in many many scripts so this is a crucial and very basic feature of R. To actually see or to learn which objects we already created we can use the ls function so it's ls and empty brackets and if I would run this line you would now see in the console which objects are already created or which object names are already occupied. The same thing would be by using the objects command. So again, objects empty brackets. If I would run this one, I would get the same result. And basically the output in those lines down here should be the same as you see in the global environment. So it is basically all about those values or those object names, which you can also see in the global environment. If you actually want to remove the object, you can use the RM function. So in this case it is rm brackets quotation signs and then the name of the object which you want to remove. In this case it is the object x. So if I'm running this one you now see that in the global environment we do not have the object x anymore. Please note that in case you already have the object x in your environment but you are creating a new object with the same name x, the old object would simply be overwritten. So then you would lose the old object x. Let's take a look at some vector calculation examples. So what you could do is, you could create another vector or another object by using already existing objects. So in this case, I'm creating the object x by using the number 5 and two times the object y. So let's take a look at this line and as you can see now we have seven elements within this object and the middle element is the number 5 and those other two elements are 4, 5 and 76 which is the object y. If we actually create the object random which actually shows us which elements of the object x are smaller than 5 we would get this output down here. So this is a new vector, it's the object random, and this is a logical vector containing only true or false values. And those values show us on which position within this object random this criterion over here is met. So all those places where x is smaller than 5 should be marked as true, and all those positions where this criteria is not met should be marked with false. So let's take a look at it. We know that x looks like this. And now we should actually take a look on which positions those values are smaller than 5. Because on those positions we should have a true as an output. And this is basically on this position, it's the first position. And this position which is the fifth position. And as you can see, we have a true on the first position and a true on the fifth position. So this is actually how a logical vector looks like. We can do, of course, some kind of other calculations. We can get the sum of our object x. If we would run this one, all those numbers in this vector are summed up. And this gives us the value of 175, as you can see down here. We could also get the square root of every value within the object x. If we would run this one, the output looks like this. So for example, the square root of 4 is 2 and this is what we get over here. The next thing we could do is, we could take a look at our object x and we can see which value we've got on position number 1. So please note that those box brackets are always about index positions. So let's run this one. So basically what this should show us now, it should give us the output 4, because 4 is on the first position within this vector. And of course we have the output 4 down here. The last thing I want to show you in this video is that there are actually three different types of brackets. We have the round or normal brackets, we have box brackets and we have those kind of curled brackets.
The round brackets are actually used for all those standard operations. So for example, if we want to create new objects or if we want to bind together several values, it's the round brackets to be used. Box brackets are normally used to specify index positions or to see which values are at which position within a vector. And that's exactly what we did in this exercise over here. And the last type of bracket is actually the curled brackets. Those brackets are actually used when you do functions or loops. More on that later on. In the next video, you will actually learn how you can do sequences or repetitions. So be sure to also take a look at those videos.